makes me sound like a liar. I won't do it and Dad tells me, until he tells me to do it, period. You're not God. You're not the Creator. And the inner Hayoka, uh, do not follow the traditional path. We occasionally do traditional things, and we like traditional things. But we have one leader, and it is the Creator. That one leader is the Creator, and there's only 12 of us. And we are, by the way, the last 12. There will never be an inner Hayoka again as we die out. But uh, let me get my thoughts together, folks. Cigarettes. Everybody says, my wife included, you, you know, you're killing yourself with cigarettes. Or, or you're killing me with your cigarette smoke. That's her favorite thing. I made a deal with my wife. She's a heavy set woman and uh, way too heavy set. And I told her, I'll tell you what, honey, I'll go outside and I'll smoke outside so this smoke doesn't bother you on the condition you lose weight. Okay. So I froze to death during the winter for two months while she stuffed her face. So I came in and started smoking. And warmer in there. And uh, she says, you're smoking in here. Don't you know that smoke will kill me? And I looked at her and I says, it doesn't seem to matter to you. Died. I'm in it. I said, first off, honey, you know darn well what scripture says. And second off, you know that you're just stuffing your face left and right and you want to die anyway from overeating and a bad heart or whatever, that's your business. But I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to live, live your fears. I find cigarette smoking causes only two problems, and this is uh, something that all the uh, ancestors, elders have found. You don't inhale until you get old. And uh, if you inhale, and they, they told the young warriors, if you inhale, that it shortens your breath. And somewhere along the line, somebody's gonna, you're gonna be in a running battle, and uh, because of your shortness of breath, you might be lanced or tomahawked because they can catch you because they haven't inhaled. But as uh, the, the old men, you know, let their warrior years and set around, they would inhale. And I'm an old man, and, but I haven't left my warrior years. I'm still fighting, but uh, in a different way. But it does two things. It shortens your breath, and it doesn't allow me to yodel. I love to yodel, but I can't yodel when I'm smoking. Give me two, three weeks off, and I'm a great yodeler. But uh, that's it. And one day, I went in for my annual checkup, and a little German Baptist Christian lady was my nurse, or doctor, rather. Real little, and I'm five five and a half, five, six, I've shrank. But uh, she was quite a bit shorter than I was. And she had a stethoscope to my back. Now, she's checked me usually once a year, sometimes twice a year, number of times. And, uh, you know, breathe in, breathe out, I did it. And to herself, she says, huh, I don't understand it. Now, I'm trying to quote everything that went on, all right? It was, it was flawlessly as possible. And I turned turned around and kind of looked back to my side behind her, me, and I said, what is it you don't understand, my sister? And she came to my left side and put her little hands on her little hips and looked up at me and she said, Red Oak, you, uh, I know many people that smoke. You smoke more than anybody I know. And of all the people that I know that smoke, most are dead and all the rest are dying. And yet when I check your lungs, they're clear as a bell. And here I am coughing, you know, and stuff. And she shook her head and she said, I don't understand it. And I laughed and I said, well, I understand it. And she pulled herself around in front of me and put her hands on her hips and looked up at me again. She said, well, then would you mind explaining it to me? And I reached in my pocket and I pulled out my palm oil regular. I don't like a filter. And I tapped one out. I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to uh, um, light it in her office. 
and I held them to my fingers, and I said, the fact is, honey, these don't cause cancer. And I said, you, you call yourself a Christian, right? And, well, Red Oak, you know I am. Yeah. I said, and I'm be honest with you, I looked at her in the eye, and I said, both. And it took her back, you know. And I says, as a, a Christian, I assume that you claim that you believe the Word of God 100%, right? And she says, oh, yes, I do. I looked at her in the eyes, and again, I said, bull. And she said, would you mind explaining that to me? And I said, certainly. I said, honey, because of your education and your authority as a doctor, People respect you for that, and they respect your knowledge. And you tell them if they don't quit smoking, they're going to die of cancer. And the pharmaceutical agencies, they claim you're going to die so that they can get more contributions to cure cancer, which, by the way, is quite curable, and they already, I, I've cured it, you know, with the knowledge that uh, I know. And. Uh, and uh, um, I says, and they pay off the government under the table, and the government pushes it too because it's all a money thing. And uh, uh, I didn't tell her because it's all a money thing, but you know what I mean. And uh, so everybody's telling everybody that you're going to die of cancer if you smoke. And I says, the fact is, they believe you because of your education and training. And they accept what you say. And because you have given them fear, they inherit six feet of ground, and you get to go to Sweden to ski on their money. And I says, the scripture says, the things I've feared have come upon me. And I had no idea where it said it, but I've read it many times. I knew it was Old Testament, didn't know where. I'm not one that kind of wrote things down, R-O-T-E. And uh, she said, oh, yes, it's Job, something in Job. And I said, I don't fear getting cancer from these things, and I refuse to accept you feeding your knowledge and accepting the fear of it. I believe the word of God. You don't. And therefore, I will not get cancer from cigarettes. And she looked down, you know, shut her eyes and, and looked down almost, almost, I don't know, apologetically or whatever, humbled, and slowly shook her head and then with her eyes and head down. She said, Red Elk, You've told me many strange things over the years. And then she opened her eyes and looked up at me. And she said, I can't honestly say I believe everything you say. Of course, I don't blame her. But then she shook her head side to side. And very quietly, she said, but you sure make me think. And the fact is, if you believe you're going to die from any particular thing, you're going to, uh, you're feeling fear. And, uh, I was on my ride down here, and I got in, in a, my last bus, and the bus driver was Bible Belt, uh, you know, and, and a lady right behind me, 80-year-old lady looking, boy, surprised the daylights out of me. I doubt if she looked more than 64. But uh, uh, I asked when the next stop, and the guy asked, the driver asked why, and I said, so I can get a cigarette. No, boy, all hell broke loose. He was a Christian, she was a Christian. And all the sin of smoking cigarettes and all the trouble you're getting into and on and on and on. I says, I'm sorry, folks. I believe the word of God. Well, so do we. And uh, then I explained this. And I told, the, I told them both. I says, you're not my God. And I refuse to believe what you write. I got a written word and I believe it. Now, well, nevertheless, I says, well, the guy had been a licensed mortician, the driver, and owned his own three, he said, uh, funeral homes, you know, at one time. He says, I've seen the smoke and stuff from cigarettes in the lungs. I says, so have I. I says, I'm not denying that it'll shorten your breath. 
that your lungs get all all crudded up. I said, you, you're not getting that from me. I won't deny it. But at the same time, I'm not going to accept that that killed me. And they were telling me how wrong I was. I said, you're not fighting me. You're fighting God's word and you're calling yourselves Christ and Bible believers. You're fighting God. You're not fighting me. Well, that sort of shut it up. So that's where that stands. Cigarettes do not cause cancer. And it's a fear that it does that gets it to you. I don't care if you want to hear it or not. That's the Bible way of explaining it. Doesn't mean that it smells good to you and stuff like that. But uh, if, uh, the human race is ruled by fear, totally ruled by fear in everything. Oh, if I lose a day's work, I'm going to have my electricity turned off. Oh, if I lose, you know, if I get real sick, uh, I'll miss my truck payment. It'll be taken away. And you go out there and you work your buns off sicker than a dog and make everybody else sick just because you're fearful you lose this or that. And in truth, you can levitate and sit there and pass a speeding 70 mile an hour car on a freeway with your rear setting on the air and your arm out an invisible window steering, an invisible steering wheel, pass them up and go beep, beep as you go by them. I don't do it. I can do it. I don't do it. Do you know why I don't do it? Because I'd have a lot of heart attacks. I'd have a lot of accidents. Because the world, we use wisdom with the things that we that we learn, period. But there there'll be a time when, um, well, you know, I I pretty much practice in uh, um, levitation at least three times every year, until I get up uh, the bed that I'm laying on. You know, suddenly I'm not even filling the sheet, and that's enough. Just you know, just to keep me practicing. Down I go. And uh, for the first and only time in my life, I got an official, real apprentice, a Cree Indian, full blood. And uh, he didn't do it the way I taught him to do it, but he got on the bed, decided he was going to give this a go, and literally rose five inches and stayed there until he went down. I've never had anybody do that. But uh, usually it's a one-second flight, and believe me, one second is a long time when you're not coming down. And then the second time, it's two or three seconds. And then the third time, it's it's another two or three seconds. And after the third, three, it makes or breaks habit. You're convincing your mind that you have convinced your mind wrong. And you're re readjusting your mind, and it's fighting you all the way. No, no, you can't, you can't, you can't. And when you over overrule your own your own beliefs that you're raised with, then you can. Like I I've, I've talked to the group, what are these two words are positive? What is negative? Can't and can. And everybody generally everybody will say can't is negative. And that's why you can't do things. You are positive, you can't. It's a positive negativity. And it keeps you grounded, period. When you can lose the can'ts in your life, can't, hope, maybe, think, want, will, uh, believe, all of those are can't-related words that put something off to the future or stops it immediately. But it never arrives in the future. When you just say, piece of cake, I sure can, and I will, and I am, that's when you start doing the things of Christ. Now, I am. That brought up an interesting thought. What is the opposite? Christ said, I am. What's the opposite of I, folks? Think about it. Somebody tell me. You. All right. What's the opposite of am? <laughs> What's the opposite of am? Am not. Mm -hmm. 
What Christ was saying is, I am, you are not.